I'm here with Anchorman and Anchorman 2 star, David Kechner. Hello, Dave. <laughs> you got two Daves. Yeah, two nice. Daves. Yeah. Are you a Dave or a David? I, I really don't hear the difference. I don't stand on like, hey, I'm David, not Dave. Do you? Uh, I kind of prefer David, Do but you? I respond to both. You think it's more formal? It makes you feel... There's so many Daves out there. Ah, yeah. is that right? I didn't, I didn't think it's that. It's such a generic name. Why not? Is it? Don't you think? I've never, I've never had an issue with my name. I've always liked it. I know some people like. I'm, I can see why some people have issue with some of their names. Mm -hmm. But Dave's pretty solid. Dave's easy. Dave's easy. But I also spend my life in a store with minding my own business, uh -huh. and someone else named Dave yeah. is called. And I'm constantly jerking my head to, but oh, not me. I will tell you this though: every Dave or David that I meet, I immediately feel a brotherhood with. Uh -huh. I mean, when I say, "Hey, hey Dave," you, in some way we've shared life together. That's right. By by having that same moniker, there's an experience that comes along with that name. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, does someone want to call Dave? We'll see if he responds. Right, but I, I I always feel a certain kinship with other Daves and Davids. Yeah, I do, I do. I do. We, we do have that same life experience. Right. So speaking of life experience, uh -huh. you know, you are doing lots of comedy. You yeah. are doing lots of films. Mm -hmm. You are doing very well in terms of pop culture <laughs> quotability. <laughs> and uh, Anchorman comes along, you know, how did that change your life? Well, it, it you know, I got busier. Uh, jobs came quicker and easier. Um, at the same time, we kept having more children. So yeah. I think a lot of my focus was like, here's the career. It was like, hey, there's a lot going on over there. So yeah, it, it's, it's been incredible. It, it, the movie didn't light up necessarily and become this big blockbuster that mm -hmm. may have changed in a different way. So it's been a slow build that people started going, oh, that's that guy from The Thing. And so they, you know, the more I'd hear people yell whammy, uh, the more I would understand right on, they're getting it. How often do you get? Whammy. At least once a week, and it's going to increase a lot more now since we're going to be going out doing a lot more press. And uh, when I do stand up now, I will, people will just yell it from the audience, so mm -hmm. I have to throw a couple whammies back at them. <laughs> Sometimes at the airport, people will holler at me and go, "Hey man, give me a whammy!" And I'll go whammy, you know. Yeah, it wasn't very good. <laughs> like I have to scream it at the airport, which oh, to yeah. me it would be so sad because it'd be such a look at me moment, and I don't care to do that. Now when you're working on uh, Anchorman 2, here you have this opportunity nine years later that you pretty much all did not think you had. Uh -huh. And you're on set each day, and I know Adam McKay loves to take, multi he, he, you start with something and then mm -hmm. you get multiple takes. Right. What, what was your favorite moment that you think probably does not make the final cut? There are too many. Um, now there's talk that and I don't think I'm out talking about school, but I think Adam mentioned it. There's another movie, of the same movie, there are 250 additional jokes. There are alternative jokes, or there are scenes that didn't make this cut, because it's, we well, try to make it as long as they could anyway. Right. Just jam as much as we could, but we have a, 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 an embarrassment of riches, joke-wise and comedy-wise. There, there are, there, I don't know if I can say this, I'm going to, there's a musical number that didn't make the picture. <laughs> that's just glorious. Mm. But I, I've heard that they might put out an alternate version uh, months later ah. that you'll enjoy equally. Do you crack yourself up or does that get a bit No, I don't crack myself up. Oh, you mean watching myself yeah, when, on when TV? Yeah, when you're watching on, your on moments, is, is that a self-conscious moment or do you kind of get lost in the picture enough to be amused by the choices that made the final cut? And, From myself personally? And your delivery? Not really. I, for me, I'm, I'm more like more or less studying, and so if you notice it worked, you're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. that worked, and then you, you're digesting. Me personally, I'm digesting why did that work. Yeah. But the other three cracked me up. There were three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty people, and mm -hmm. cracked me up. So many great performances in the film. I love it. Would you say keeping five kids around the house uh -huh. that belong to you uh -huh. is that a grounding experience? Oh yeah, well, it's a humbling experience. <laughs> Uh, but there are ways of making it work, mm -hmm. and my wife and I are constantly trying to improve our parenting, and I think we're getting pretty good. Mm -hmm. I will say that. I hope my kids agree <laughs> in the future. There's always, there are always challenges, and the greatest challenge is maintaining your cool. Mm -hmm. The greatest challenge is just, you know, being neutral. We read this book. Uh, the way of peace, and it's about keeping a peaceful heart, mm -hmm. which applies to raising children, because you want to have peace and love in your heart so you can keep giving it back to your kids. 
otherwise. And the other thing in the book it, it talks about is see them as a person always, mm -hmm. not a thing or not a, an issue you have to deal with. It's always, there's a little person right there that's having a tough time. Mm -hmm. It's not about being disobedient. It's not about, uh, you know, a lot of books are like, it's a power struggle. They're like, this kid needs something right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's my responsibility to recognize that and be another human being to that person. Mm -hmm. And hopefully get them to a place where they feel comfortable again and, um, you know, confident and they can move on and, and, you know, negotiate a better way of dealing with sure. seeing, the, seeing their point of view. Yeah. Do your kids know what you do? do the older, what do the older kids think? Well, now they're even more aware, certainly, of what Anchorman means and it is and how much other, how many other projects I've been a part of and that it's pretty cool that we know all these famous people, but they're just people sure. that have these high-profile jobs. I mean, what, I don't, I haven't cured anything. <laughs> Although sometimes people have Facebooked my wife and said they'd watched our movie when they were having a, um, you know, recuperating from a, an illness or something like that. So if that helped in any way, great. They but, do say laughter is the best cure. Best, best cure, best medicine. I uh, read that on the tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> you said tea bag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Always a funny word. And you've got a stand-up tour coming out? Doing a stand-up tour next year called Together Again, which is basically with me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. uh, doing a lot of cities. So if you go to davidkechner.com, you get the tour dates there. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of, uh, I've got my own YouTube channel called Full On Kechner, mm -hmm. where you can see a lot more of my comicals, if you're so inclined. If you like to see cats hitting people in the nuts. <laughs> I've been making fun of the videos themselves because there's so much nut punch humor <laughs> on the internet, like so many, what I see a lot of comedy just really at its base, that's all it is, is you're getting punched in the nuts, one way or the other. And cats are so popular <laughs> on YouTube, I yeah. thought, why don't we just marry them and have cats hitting guys in the balls? Which is like, because every man, no matter who they are, really it's just a 13 year old boy. Mm -hmm. So I clicked on this saying, I'm not going to laugh because this won't be funny, and I'm here recommending it. It is hysterical. If you're a boy, because girls are just, it's the dumbest thing in the world. But I don't mind doing dumb stuff, but there's a lot of other character pieces on there that people probably haven't seen before. I do this character called Roy, who's a 350-pound gay man, but it's a very sweet character. Mm -hmm. uh, Jokey, who's a guy who thinks he's very funny and can't, his compulsion to tell jokes and then bail out at the last second. Gerald Tibbins, which is a, an old character I've been doing for a long time. So there's a lot of stuff on there that you can't, you know, I hadn't produced anywhere else, so. Is doing stand-up your favorite aspect of the job that you do because of that connection with the audience? Probably, if, if I could do that every night and make a, a quality living and not have to travel, mm -hmm. that's the tough thing about stand-up. Sure. You do have to go to other cities. But then you can, I, here's the thing, I don't mind traveling, I don't mind airports, I don't mind hotels. I love seeing people all over the country. The only downside is being away from my family. Sure. That's the tough part. I really appreciate you taking your time to talk to us. Thanks today. for having me. As, us being my multiple personalities. Yes, us. Yes. Thank me, you myself, much. and I, together again. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Right on. Cheers.